For this retro anime review, we're going to be looking at Goku Midnight Eye. This is the first of two OVAs that were based off the manga written by Buichi Terasawa. Terasawa is best known for being the creator of Space Cobra, which is one of my favorite classic manga, and the TV series directed by Osamu Dezaki is one of my favorite anime series of all time. Terasawa created a number of other manga that were less notable than Cobra, but they all had his signature style, featuring a manly main character and many beautiful women in a very 80s style, and Goku Midnight Eye is no exception to that. The character designs and stylistic choices that they make have a very signature 80s style and feel to them, as well as having a level of absurdity and ridiculous nature to them. You can see it right away just looking at the cover. Dressed in a suit jacket and tie, but no shirt underneath. And then kneeling in front of him is a woman who's part human, part motorcycle. This is just the kind of crazy, ridiculous thing that you would see nowhere but a Terasawa manga or an OVA based off of one. You get a good sign that this is going to be a good OVA because it's directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri who directed some of the most awesome action-packed OVAs and movies of the 80s and 90s. He directed films like Ninja Scroll and Vampire Hunter D and while this OVA is not quite on that level, it still has Kawajiri's signature look and features sharp animation with really awesome fight and action sequences. The story takes place in the distant future of 2014, where the world is a cyberpunk dystopia and everyone's bodies are outfitted with cybernetic enhancements. Our main character is Goku Ferengi, a former police officer who is no longer with the force due to his problems with following authority and now he works as a private detective. Based on his name and extending staff, his design appears to be at least partially a reference to Son Goku from Journey to the West, the same character that Goku from Dragon Ball is based off of. The story opens up with a number of police officers dying under mysterious circumstances. There is a large number of police officers that are committing suicide while on duty, one of these being Goku's former partner and close friend. Goku knows that his partner wouldn't have committed suicide and begins to investigate into what's going on. Goku finds out that before he died, he was investigating an arms dealer by the name of Genji Hakuryu. After witnessing another suicide by a police officer, Goku decides to infiltrate Hakuryu's headquarters. Goku makes his way into the building, but he's quickly captured by Hakuryu's henchmen. He's brought to Hakuryu, and Hakuryu tells Goku that Goku will kill himself also. Then Goku is knocked out and wakes up in his car on the highway. He begins to drive and he sees a woman on the back of a truck. This woman works for Hakuryu, and she has the power to hypnotize people. She's been the one behind the suicides of all the police officers, where she used her powers to get them to either commit suicide or murder their partners before killing themselves as well. She begins to use his power on Goku, and he realizes what's happening, and in order to break himself out of the trance, he stabs himself in his eye. He breaks out of his trance and doesn't kill himself, but he loses control of his vehicle and crashes off the highway and into the sea. Goku is rescued by a mysterious organization who gives him a new eye, the eye of God that can hack into any computer system in the world and take control of it. They also give him a powerful weapon, the staff that I mentioned a bit earlier, that Goku can extend at will. With these new weapons, Goku is now extremely powerful. After Goku's love interest and last surviving officer on the force investigating Hakuryu gets killed by Hakuryu's henchmen, Goku will now use his new powers to do everything he can to take down Hakuryu. Goku will then set off on his mission to get revenge on Hakuryu for the death of his friends. He will use his newfound powers to fight through Hakuryu's henchmen in order to make it through his headquarters and take down Hakuryu himself. This is another one of those really badass, awesome 80s anime. It's definitely got the quality that you would expect from something directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri. The animation is sharp and detailed, and the action sequences look really good. Goku has a lot of awesome fights against all of the crazy villains in this OVA. The OVA has a really distinct 80s aesthetic that's really pleasing to look at. It's got this cool cyberpunk-like setting, so there's a lot of these really well-done cityscapes that look really great. There's some scenes where he's like driving throughout the city and the way that the city and the buildings and the lights and everything are done look absolutely incredible. 
The way they use color and lights and various camera angles make the OVA look really interesting and give it a lot of visual charm and aesthetic appeal. The way the lighting and shading is done gives it a bit of a dark atmosphere and as a style I think looks really good. It's something that's true about most of the Kawajiri directed anime. The soundtrack also has a real 80s aesthetic to it that I think is really charming and enjoyable to hear. I've heard people complain about the plot of this one and say that the plot is too dumb, but I don't really think it's that bad. I would say the plot is on the level of the average OVA of that time. It's nothing real deep or anything, it's mostly just about the action. And this OVA definitely delivers on that. It's full of badass action. So if you don't think about it too hard and just kind of enjoy it the same way you would enjoy one of those badass action movies from that same time period, stuff like Robocop or a Schwarzenegger movie, then you'll really enjoy this OVA. The plot's not awful, it's a pretty simple revenge plot, and Goku's powers with the eye that allows him to control any computer is pretty interesting. It's a fairly unique power that I haven't really seen too much in anything else. I thought it was a pretty cool idea that gives it a little bit of something to differentiate itself from other 80s action OVAs. I'm going to give this one 4 stars out of 5. It doesn't have the best story or anything, but it still manages to be pretty enjoyable. Visually, it's one of my favorite OVAs. I love the way the city and the action sequences look. The colors and visuals just have that 80s aesthetic that is one of my favorite things to see in any media, and I really just can't get enough of that style. I think this is one that's worth putting on if you're looking for a really badass action anime. It's not my favorite Kawajiri directed anime, but it still ranks up there with some of its better ones, and is worth seeing just for the visual spectacle of it if for nothing else. They would make a part 2 later that year, but unfortunately the second part wouldn't be as good as the first. I may do a future video on the second OVA. Although I didn't really feel like the second OVA was as notable as the first, I didn't feel like the action sequences were as good, and I felt like the plot wasn't as memorable, and didn't really do anything to answer the questions that were presented in the first part. And then the second part would be the end of the Goku Midnight Eye OVAs, so unfortunately we would never get any continuation of the series since then. So that's going to do it for this video. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you would like to. And thanks so much for watching.